السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله والحمد لله. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله النبي الحبيب المصطفى السراج المنير وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. In these uh, short few moments that I have, inshallah, I'm gonna just try and uh, explain as best as I can the these last 10 nights that we're in of Ramadan. That's what today's uh, brief talk is about. And I'm sure many of you have heard uh, many of these talks or many similar reminders about these last 10 nights, but we can never hear enough because the nature of human, the nature of the human being is that they forget. That's why we were called insan. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us the insan because insan comes from the word yansa, forgets always forgetting. So we always need that constant reminder and that rejuvenation. And Allah says so in the Quran, Remind them, constantly remind them. Who's, who's going to benefit from this reminder? Al-Mu'mineen. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of them, inshaAllah. My purpose of this talk, inshaAllah, is if I can just get one person to do a bit more dhikr, in these last 10 nights or throughout their life or just pray one extra sajda or just give a tiny bit more in sadaqah or just exert one second extra effort for the sake of Allah in this temporary life that will convert to an infinite life in Jannah then alhamdulillah my uh, uh, purpose here is, is fulfilled and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to do this these last 10 nights of Ramadan that we're in they are very special and I want everyone's mindset, then this is all advice to myself first and foremost, is not these are the last 10 nights of Ramadan, these are the last 10 nights of my life before I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how would you spend these last 10 nights if these were genuinely the last 10 nights you had left on planet earth before you returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course, if you, if you had this mindset, everything would change. It's always about mindset. Everything in life is about mindset. The Sahaba, they were human beings as well. They're no different from us. They had the same biology. They had the same genetics. So were the Tabi'een, the Salaf. And so were the pious predecessors. They're not different. They just had a different mindset. Their mindset was far better. It was far more uh, zealous. It was far more focused on the Akhirah. They knew. They had Yaqeen. They had 100% certainty that Allah exists. That Jannah exists. Jahannam exists. The Day of Judgment, it exists because the more yaqeen you have, the more certainty you have in something or the more certainty you have in the next life in Allah, surely you will spend every second you have to please this Lord because you, you truly believe in Him. You truly believe I'm going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day, which means that if you find someone who's doing more than you, know that perhaps it's because they have a stronger belief in who Allah is. They actually believe in the Day of Judgment more than you. They actually believe in Jannah more than you. Or else what else motivates us? Why do we get up for Qiyam? Why do we go to Taraweeh? Why do we fast? Why do we give more in charity when we're asked to? Why? It's because we have a Yaqeen. Ah, I'm going to see the rewards of this one day. So we have to always try and increase our Yaqeen. As a side point, our, our certainty in the next life. It is normal for human beings to lose motivation and become desensitized to things once they've been overexposed to them. This is clear, not just because we're Muslim, read any kind of science paper, any kind of activity. Initially, it's really amazing, the buzz, you know, the energy, the hype of Ramadan, and then it dies down. Desensitization, this is normal. But we can change that. We have to, take, we have to change our mindset to be like, I can't become desensitized. There's no time to waste. There's no time to waste time. I only have 10 days left to live. I have to make the most of them or 10 nights left to live. How would you spend that? How would you spend that? Because every second genuinely does count. One of the um, famous ulama of the past, he would say, uh, Ya Adam, inna ma anta ayyam, fa'idha dhahaba yawmun dhahaba ba'aduk. 
O son of Adam, you're just a number of days. That's what you're comprised of. If a day of you passes, then a piece of you has died. You can't go back. Khalas. Why would you want to waste that? For this temporary life? This life is nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't care about this dunya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, لَوْ كَانِتِ الدُّنْيَا تَعَدِلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضَ مَا سَقَى كَافِرًا مِنْهَا شَرْبَةَ مَا Had this world and everything in it, was it if, if it was even worth the wing of a mosquito to Allah, the wing of a fly, the wing of a little insect that you swat away, and in fact, if it stung you, you wouldn't even want to chase it out of how pathetic that little creature is. You don't care about it. Allah says, this, the wing of that, that's how much the, wor the, wor the, the world is worth to me. And we want to exchange that for the Akhirah, a, a paradise which is forever. مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَا نَوَا has ever seen in Jannah. No ear has ever heard. مَا لَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرْ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ وَا No heart has ever been able to imagine. Every second in this world directly translates to that world. And the more you do in this world, every second, every hour, every minute, every hour, you will see the fruits of that in the next life. Isn't that amazing? So if you realize this mindset, not just in these last nights of Ramadan, but throughout life, your life will change. You will not want to waste time anymore. You're not going to want to chit chat anymore. I don't have time to talk about irrelevant things. I don't have time to mess about. This is how, this is how the prior spirit assessors, they approached life, subhanAllah. Let us go back to, as always, as narrated by Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَمْرَيْنْ لَنْ تَضِلُّ مَا تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةَ نَبِيهِ I have left behind two things, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. That's it. I've left behind two things. The book of Allah, the Quran that we see around you, and the sunnah, the beloved sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. If you follow these two things, Rasulullah said, and you hold on to them, you'll never go astray. So how did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approach these last 10 nights? And we know he was the best role model, was he not? We know he was the best example. I didn't say this. Allah said this. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرُ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, in the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the perfect role model, exemplary. He is the one you should all follow. Whatever he did, every single thing that he did, you follow it, every footstep. Hatta Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu was narrated to try and even walk in the same footsteps as Rasulullah. Literally, he tried to walk in the same footsteps out of love for him. That's how much he wanted to follow the sunnah. Look at that. Yarhamkumullah. Isn't that amazing? Alayhi salatu was salam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ Allah says, indeed in him was a perfect role model. Everything he did, do it. And the Sahaba were the Sahaba. Why? As I said, it's a mindset thing. They're not biologically different from us. They just had a different mind. Because when they saw a sunnah, they were like, I'm going to go do that sunnah. أَنَا لَهَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Let me be the first to do that sunnah that you have advised me to do, my beloved. أَمَّا نَحْنُ How about us? When a sunnah is mentioned, I hear this all the time and I ask Allah, A'udhu Billah, I seek refuge in Allah from being this person. I say it's just a sunnah, I don't have to do it. Of course you don't have to do it, that's true. But this is Rasulullah telling you, advising you to do it. If your father, your beloved father or your beloved mother, they ask you to do something or advise you to do something, you would consider it, at least you would consider it. Half of us would do it, half of us would consider it. A small portion of us would be no, like, no, I'm not going to do that, perhaps. Forget them. This is Rasulullah. And he's saying, this is what I used to do. I think you should do this. This is good. Stay away from it. Uh, do this. This is bad. Stay away from it. Of course, It's not the Prophet's words. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's telling him what to say. Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, she narrates that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, when the last nights entered upon everyone, and I'm sure everyone has heard this hadith before, huh? and this is narrated in Bukhari, that when 
the last ten nights came, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he tightened his belt. Huh? He ahya uh, laylahu. I will explain each of these. He stayed up the whole night. And he told his family, get up. He would pass by his family, knock on the door. Do you not want to get up and pray? No? I know you're a young child, but you should get up. And so on and so forth. He tightened his belt. Anyone who has seen any kind of weightlifting competition or anyone who's ever been to the gym or anyone who is you know, involved in hard work, what do they do? They'll roll up their sleeves when they get serious. They'll put the belt on when they're doing a big lift. Why? To show that now it's, now it's go time. Now it's serious time. Before I was just playing around, I was warming up. The first 20 days I was just warming up. Now I'm going to be serious. That's what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would do. And there's also an indication uh, to this that he would stay away from worldly, worldly pleasures with his wives and so on and so forth. I, he, he tightened his belt, if that makes sense. Of course, it's halal, but this is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would do. But he was Rasulullah Sallallahu What else would he do? So first thing we should try and remember is the Prophet tightened his belt. I will tighten my belt, inshallah. I claim to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let me try following his footsteps. I know you're tired. I'm tired too. But we have to push ourselves. It's a mindset, as I said. It's a mindset. Number two, Ahya Laylahu. This is uh, as Ibn Taymiyyah, he narrates that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, would never in his, in, in, throughout the year spend the whole night in worship except for the last two nights of Ramadan. He wouldn't sleep والسلام, till after Fajr. Now, I realize, of course, and this is uh, obvious in today's modern day and age, that a lot of people can't do this because of work. Some people have work at 7 a.m., 8 a.m. That's fine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallam, he says, Inna deena la yusr. Inna deena la yusr. This religion is easy. وَلَنْ يُشَادَّ الدِّينَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا غَلَبَ And whoever goes to extremes in their religion, hmm, they take on too much that they can handle, it's going to overburden them, overpower them. And then they will end up what? Slacking off. So don't go to extremes in the religion. فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغَدْوَةِ وَالْرَوْحَةِ وَشَيْءٍ مِنَ الدُّلْجَةِ But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, وَسَدِّدُوا Get as close to perfection as possible. Try your best, try your hardest. So yes, you may have work in the morning. Try and sleep just a bit less. On these 10 nights, just these 10 nights. And then you can sleep. And spend that extra hour in ibadah. Spend that extra hour reading that Quran or doing qiyam, tahajjud especially. <coughs> Try find a way to get some time off work. Anything you can do. And there's a lot of people who take time off work. You know yourself best. You know your job best. But you have to make an effort, an active effort. You know? This is something we should have planned in advance. Ah, the last nights of Ramadan are coming up. I should take these days off work. I know many people who do this. This is the Muslim who cares about their next life and not about their dunya as much. Why? Because they're concerned. They're like, these are <laughs> These are really a number of days. There are a small number of days. I cannot waste them. I will take my days off work. Maybe you can't take 10 days off work. I can take five. I can't take five. I can take four and so on and so forth. But if you don't have work, especially the youth uh, or those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed that they are you know, self-employed or whatever it is, these are days that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he would spend the whole night in worship. And he would exude himself. He would push himself. Of course he was tired. He was a human being like all of us, alayhi salatu wasalam. But he would stay up. It's fine, have a coffee. Drink something, energy drink to keep yourself up. Have a nap before Maghrib. Do something to tell yourself, your mindset, La, I will not fall asleep. I'm staying up. I'm tired, I'm snoozing off. Go to the mosque. This is advice to myself first and foremost. And I'm at home alone. Yes, the shaitan, he might come and get me and, tell, and, and whisper in my ear to just snooze a bit. If you feel like this, try go to the mosque. It's hard to sleep in the mosque when everyone around you is doing ibadah. You have to be unique. We have to be creative. We have to do something. Abi Muslim Al-Khawlani, he was a very, very uh, righteous uh, of the Salaf, one of the Salaf, he was very righteous. Uh, he, he would say, he, he would, uh, when he was uh, praying, the, praying the night prayer, huh? the tahajjud prayer, and he felt like his legs were getting tired. 
Wallahi, yesterday my legs were very tired in uh, the night prayer. My calves were gone, <laughs> but I pushed myself, I tried. He would say, as he had a stick hanging from the roof of the masjid, he would get his stick if his legs got tired and he would hit his legs. He would smack them, smack his feet. And he would say, It is more befitting that I hit you, my legs, than my mule, than my donkey. Because back then they used to ride on animals, and, you know, camels and donkeys and so on and so forth. Now we have cars. And they would hit them. Don't they? You see this. They hit their animals to make them go faster. صح? He would hit his own legs and say, I'm, It's more deserving that I hit you than my own animal. Stand up for Allah. Aisha radiallahu anha, very beautiful hadith. If there's one hadith that you want to take away from today or memorize in your whole life, memorize this one. Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrates, that the Prophet, she narrates or she asks the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa why do you stand up in the night so long praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah has forgiven you. What has preceded you and what has or all your previous past and your post sins. Allah's already forgiven all of that. Why do you stand up for such a long time in Qiyam? The hadith says, he would stand so long in prayer, listen to this, until his feet would swell up. This is Rasulullah. This is the most beloved creation to Allah. He would stand so long that his feet would start to swell up and blister. Why? What did he say, alayhi salatu wasalam? أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Shall I not be a grateful slave to my Lord? SubhanAllah. So whenever you feel lazy in these last 10 nights, this is something I personally found that helps me. I tell myself, يَا زَيْدْ كُنْ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Be a grateful slave. Allah has given you so many blessings that you don't realize. Be a grateful slave. كُنْ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا And Allah says in the Quran, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورَ Very few of my slaves are actually grateful. Very few of us are actually grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we ask Allah to be of these grateful few? So this is also a motivating factor to help us stay awake in these nights. I claim to be grateful. I've just had my delicious iftar. I have a healthy body, walhamdulillah. I have a roof over my head. I don't have bombs dropping on me. Everything is going good, walhamdulillah. Of course, we all have problems. No one doesn't have a hardship. But Allah will never burden you more than you can bear. أَفَلَا أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا SubhanAllah So the Prophet would spend the whole night in prayer. Let's try and do that inshaAllah. Prayer, dhikr, dua, Quran, whatever you want, any kind of ibadah, uh, watching Islamic lectures. And by the way, uh, don't limit ibadah, let us not limit ibadah to these acts of ibadah. I know someone who, on, I know someone who, uh, and pay attention to this inshaAllah, he would make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allow, allows, Allah allows him to find Laylatul Qadr in these last 10 nights and to make the most of Laylatul Qadr every second of it in the best form of worship, whatever it is. Anyway, on that particular year, he asked around and everyone seemed to have said it was the night of the 23rd. I don't know if anyone remembers this year, maybe two years ago, three years ago. No one knows when Laylatul Qadr is, but if you know, everyone had said, I felt like it was the 23rd. So let's just pretend it was the 23rd, okay? What did this particular brother do on this night? He tells me. He did no Quran. He did no dhikr. Well, not like his usual amount. He did no, he didn't donate in charity. He did uh, no qiyam, no tahajjud, no taraweeh even. No asha in congregation in the mosque. No ibadah. No classical ibadah, if you want to say it like that. What was the only thing he did? All he did that night that was different to the other nights was he took his mom out to dinner as she had come back from travels. And then when, the, when she got home or when they got home, the father was talking to the child, the son, for two hours. And the child was just thinking, can you hurry up? I want to go and do some ibadah. I want to go and do some Quran. I want to do some dhikr. I want to do some Quran. I want to go to the Hajjid. But no, he sat there the whole, for hours of the night, just listening to his father. And his father was just talking, just telling him about life. And then that man, my friend, he tells me he fell asleep and he woke up at Fajr time. He did nothing that night. The only thing he did do though, he was good to his parents. At least he's good to his parents. He sat there, he smiled. 
and he lowered to them the wings of humility. This brother, he used Laylatul Qadr in the best way for him. Because Allah knows he's going to read Quran. Allah knows he's going to do dhikr. Allah knows he's going to give in charity. But perhaps the one thing that he was struggling with specifically was being good to his parents. So the best deed for him in that night might have been being good to his parents. So my point is, everyone's Laylatul Qadr is different. What do you struggle with? Maybe ask Allah to allow you to use Laylatul Qadr in the best way for you. And that could be a way that you don't even realize. And we know that there is no good deed better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than being good to one's parents. So the point is, Laylatul Qadr, it's not just restricted to reading Quran and dhikr and all these things. It is also what? Helping people who need help. It is also being good to one's parents, asking them, are you happy with me? Is there anything I can do to, you know, please you? It doesn't matter how old or young you are, and so on and so forth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he continues, or the, narr the narration continues by saying that, wa ayqadha ahlahu. He would tell his family to get up. So for the fathers of the household, we should try and do this, or you should try and do this. Wake your child up. I know they may be young, but get them used to it. Get them used to it. Don't think or have the mindset that they need to rest, they're still young. No, prepare them. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. And then the easy times they create weak men. And weak men, they create hard times. We need to have strong men. And strong men are created or are, are developed from hardship. They do. That's why the Sahaba were very tough. They went through a very much hardship. I'm sure the, there will be a talk in the future about some of the hardships of the Sahaba and Rasulullah So he would wake his family up, his wife, his children, get up, let's pray, let's do something extra, something abnormal, something that we don't usually do in these last 10 nights. So please, first advice to myself, first and foremost, encourage those around you as well. Your friends as well, bring them to the mosque. You know what I mean? Keep yourselves awake with each other, inshallah. So just remember these th three things. A lot of people may be thinking that, you know, these last 10 nights of Ramadan have passed. Uh, sorry, these first 20 days of Ramadan has pa have passed. I've wasted my time. What's the point in trying? I only have 10 days left. Let me tell you something. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he accepts Islam in what year? Hijri. Approximately the seventh. He only is with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Pay attention to this. For three or four years, left of the Prophet's life, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu has that much time left with the noble Prophet. He's missed everything, Badil, uh, Battle of Badr, Uhud, all of these things. He's missed the Hijrah. He wasn't there for the first 13 years in Mecca. Three years left with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa You'd think, ah, he's only got 10 days left of Ramadan. What's he gonna do? He's wasted the first 20 days. No, look at his mindset. He knew the value of time. Remember what I said? Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, you are a number of days. If a day of you passes, a piece of you has died. He realized, subhanAllah, I've been a kafir all my life. I am now a Muslim and I'm in the presence of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I've wasted the first 20 days of Ramadan. I've slacked off. I need to fix up. What did he end up becoming? The most narrator of hadith. Of all of the Sahaba, more than Abu Bakr, more than Umar, more than Anas radiallahu anhu, more than Aisha radiallahu anha, who lived with Rasulullah, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, narrating around 12,000 hadith in the space of three or four years. Why? Because he understood that it's at that last moment that it really counts. I have to push myself to the point where, and he did push himself, by the way. Notice, he did push himself. He did make himself tired. He would sometimes be so hungry, he wouldn't eat because he didn't want to leave the Prophet's side. He wouldn't go to eat because he wanted to just observe him and note everything down or memorize everything. He wouldn't sleep much because he didn't want to miss a single second not being or observing or monitoring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you see the point? He put the effort in. He put the effort in. And that's something we have to try and do inshaAllah. Remember Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. And remember, he was just a human. He is not anything abnormal. He was not an angel. He was not a prophet. He just had a crazy, strong mindset.
It's all in the mind. Everything you do, even if you go to the gym, it's all in the mind. That last rep, that last set. When you're going for a run, anyone who's gone for a run, you get tired within the first minute. I promise you, you can run for 10 minutes. It's just a mindset. You put, keep pushing, you keep pushing, you keep pushing. Anything in life, anything you want, it's a mindset thing. You really have to train your mind. SubhanAllah, the mind is very strong. The very strong. Why do I say that? So how much time do we have left? Sorry. Why do I say that? Oh, oh. Sorry. Another mindset that we should approach this, these last 10 days is, and something personally that helped me, is this issue of, or this idea of regret. Hasra. Know that one of the names of the Day of Judgment is Yawmul Hasra, the Day of Regret. And then I thought to myself, Hasra, regret, for who? Most people will think it's for the Kafir. Ya laytani takhattu ma'ar rasuli sabila. I wish I had taken with the Prophet a path. I wish I had listened to the message of Islam. I wish I had become a Muslim. The Muslim, that's not how they think. The Muslim thinks, ah, it is a day of regret for the Muslim as well. I wish I had just done a bit more ibadah. I wish I had spent a bit longer in dhikr, a bit longer in Quran. I wish I had helped out just a few more people. I wish I had given a bit more da'wah. I wish I had read a bit more Quran. I wish I had memorized a bit more Quran. I wish I had fasted more. I wish I had given more in sadaqah, in charity. This mindset of regret. I personally hate regret. I can't stand it. That feeling of, I wish I did this, I could have done more. So we not, so inshallah, during these last 10 nights, let us remember this issue of regret. You don't want to regret in the grave or on the day of judgment, not having made the most of these 10 days of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. You don't want to, because you will come back as the people of the grave, they will say, I wish I could just come back to give some charity. I wish I could come back and just do something. We don't want to have this mindset of regret. Of course we will have it. But always remember this. That fajr that you didn't go to in congregation, you're going to regret that. Wallahi. The asha you didn't go to in congregation, you're going to regret that. Not just in Ramadan, outside of Ramadan. I know you're tired after you've eaten. You're going to regret not going to tahajjud you're gonna, uh, or, or taraweeh. You're going to feel regret for not finishing with the imam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith, Man qama ma'al imami, yani fi Ramadan, hatta yansarifa, kutiba lahu qiyamu layla. Whoever prays with the Imam until they finish their final taslims, it's as if they prayed the whole night. It's as if they have prayed the whole night. I know we're tired. Go, finish, and then go and do some Quran, and then go do something else. Keep pushing yourself till Fajr comes, and then you can rest, inshallah. And then you can rest, inshallah. So always remember this mindset of regret, this mindset of regret. I don't want to regret this. It's only 10 days. Innama hiya ayyamun qala'il. Keep telling yourself, it really is just a few number of days. And the final destination is Jannah. Do you not want a higher place in Jannah? Only a fool would say no. Do you not want a higher place in Jannah? Huh? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, Inna fil jannati mi'atu daraja ma bayna darajatayni minhuma kama bayna samai wal ard الفردوسه أعلى درجة منها تفجر أنهار الجنة الأربع ومن فوقها يكون العرش سبحان الله ومن فوقها يكون العرش فإذا سألتم الله فسألوه الفردوس that Jannah is of a hundred levels listen to this Jannah is of a hundred levels hmm? the distance between one level and the next is as if you looking at the star in the night sky tonight let us all go and look at the night sky and look at that star in the distance that's the difference between one level and the next. And obviously this is, you, I can't, you can't quantify this distance. Rasulullah is saying it's unfathomable, the distance, the status of one level to the next. And there's a hundred levels. Al-Firdaus is the highest level. From there, all of the springs of Jannah gush forth. And on top of it is the Arsh of Allah. So if you ask Allah, ask Him for Al-Firdaus. Tayyib. Is everyone going to go to Al Firdaus? No. That's why there's levels. Just like there's different levels or qualities of life in this world. There's people who live very good lives. You see them. 
they have the best food, the best drinks, they have the best women, the best houses, the best cars. They're having a great time, honestly. There's people who live on the streets. They barely have food to eat. They're eating grass. They have no homes. This world, there's different levels of qualities of life. There's high class, middle class, lower class. Is there not? Jannah is the same. Do you not want to be of the highest class? Allah is giving you an opportunity. Maybe in this life it wasn't given to you. You know what I mean? Allah is saying, Firdaus is there for you. The highest levels are there for you. But you have to work for it. You have to do something different. You have to be unique. You have to push yourself. Because I'm competing with you. You're competing with me. I'm competing with Imam Shafi'i. I'm competing with Imam Ahmed. I'm competing with the Salaf. I'm competing with the pious people. I have to push myself. Because everyone else is pushing themselves. So always have this mindset. I'm competing with everyone and I have to reach the highest level of Jannah. I have to. I have to. I will not be satisfied until I reach the highest level of Jannah. There's no option. I'm not satisfied until I'm not just in Jannah, until I'm in the highest level of Jannah. And that requires effort. Juhd. Tire yourself. In ibadah. You know, someone once said, I'll take it easy when I'm dead. That is when I will rest. When it is, when you're in the grave, then you can sleep for a long time. Don't worry, a nice comfortable bed. But in this life, get up, push yourself. Saddidu, get as close to perfection, Rasulullah said. Get as close to what? As best as you can, as you can, inshallah. But it's all about pushing yourself. So the final few things I will say, inshallah, are, of course, Laylatul Qadr is in these last 10 nights. No one knows when it is. You might hear people saying that it is on this night or that night. No one truly knows. It is most likely to be on the 27th night. Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best. I believe that is a Friday, next Friday, I think. So the fact that it's coincided with a Friday is a very good sign. Regardless, no one knows when it is. And Rasulullah himself, is narrated that he spent the first 10 days of Ramadan in the mosque trying to find Laylatul Qadr. It wasn't there. Jibril السلام, he told him it's not here. Then the next 10 days he spent worshipping trying to find Laylatul Qadr. Jibril السلام, he told him it's not these. It's in the last 10 days and on one of the odd nights, the night of the 21st, which I believe was yesterday, the night of the 23rd, the night of the 25th, the night of the 27th, the night of the 29th. So especially on these odd nights we should ex exude extra extra effort like really honestly phone do not disturb unless it's a proper uh, emergency of course you know what i mean parents do you need anything from me yes no can i go okay is there anyone who needs anything from me before i begin anything so on and so forth try not to chit chat today don't talk to me tell someone don't talk to me today is not the day to talk to me please just let me do some ibadah unless you need my help Okay, don't chit chat. It's a number of hours. It's a number of short hours. And Allah says, and Allah, He revealed a whole surah for this. We brought down the Quran on Laylatul Qadr, the Quran which changed the world. It changed the world. It changed existence, the Quran. Allah says, I brought it down on Laylatul Qadr. It's in one of these last 10 nights. Laylatul Qadr, khayrun min alfi shahr. It is better than a thousand months. But it doesn't mean that. This is a phrase that are in, 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 our, in the Arabic language. It means it could be better than a million years. It could be better. It is innumerable. Allah is saying that you can't quantify how amazing this night is. You don't understand. This is the Quran. This is my speech. This is the thing that changed the earth. This is the. If you put La ilaha illallah on one side of a scale and everything in existence on the other side, La ilaha illallah, just that phrase would outweigh the scale. This is the Quran. The angels, they come down on this night. We can't see them, of course, nor can we feel their presence. You may feel like it's a special night. Not only do the angels come to the point where there's an angel, by the way, assigned to every living thing. Every raindrop will have an angel. There's an angel on every single one of us to our right and on our left. Every mountain has an angel, every cloud, every tree. All the angels are now gathered on this one beautiful, special, powerful night. But there's one ultimate angel that comes down. Jibreel alayhi salam. Can you fathom this? 
Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel that witnessed the creation of Adam alayhi salam. He witnessed the creation of Adam alayhi salam. He was the friend of uh, Adam alayhi salam. He was the friend of Nuh alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. And he came down to Musa alayhi salam. And he was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam's closest friend as well. Jibreel alayhi salam, the most noble angel that Allah has created. Let me ask you a question. Imagine Rasulullah, you knew Rasulullah was going to be around in one of these 10 nights on earth. What would you do? You would pack your bags and go wherever he was. I don't care. I'm leaving. I'm going to try find Rasulullah. You know he's in, for example, he's just landed in Medina, for example. I'm going to Medina. I don't care if it costs me every penny I have in my bank. I just want to see the Prophet. Tayyib, what if I told you Jibreel السلام, is coming? And Allah actually says it's going to happen. Huh? The Ruh is coming down. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Angel, Jibreel alayhi salam, the most noble angel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he taught Jibreel alayhi salam the Quran. And Jibreel alayhi salam taught it to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This amazing angel is coming down. And Ibrahim al nakhai he was reported one of the very, uh, very, very uh, prominent scholars of the past, the Tabi'een. He is reported to have taken a ghusl, this is something I tried to do, taken a shower pretty much every night of the last 10 nights. And he would wear his best clothes and his most expensive perfume. Why? Because he knows a special guest is coming. He wants to be in his best appearance when Jibir alayhi salam comes. Out of what? Just respect. Out of respect. So this is something we should try and do. Indeed, the one who you know these little things, that's what gets you to the highest level of Jannah. A lot of Muslims do a lot of the normal stuff. We have to try to be unique. This is something unique. How did he come up with that? I want to take a shower on every night of the nights of Ramadan, wear my best clothes and perfume, because Jibreel is going to be on earth one of these days. I want to, I want to what? Be in the best of appearances. SubhanAllah. Look at the love they had. Look at the love they had. So this is Laylatul Qadr on one of these nights. Really, really just make the most of this night. Don't talk to people unnecessarily. Don't chit chat. To go do your own thing, as I said, unless anyone needs help. And try and do as many good deeds as you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Hadid, وَسَابِقُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Rush, race, run as fast as you can to a Jannah, a heaven, as wide as the heavens and the earth. Really run and rush towards it. Compete with one another. Laylatul Qadr is coming. Who's going to do the most good deeds? Who? That is what it is. It's a competition. Just uh, to finish off, some final meanings of Laylatul Qadr is it is a night of what? Supreme uh, dignity and honor. It is a night of power in the sense that anyone who worships on this night, Allah honors and elevates them. It is a night that all your sins can be forgiven. Khalas. It is the night, and this is the most important one, of decree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He decrees all of the qadr for, that whole, for, the, for the next year in this one night. Your dua on this night of Laylatul Qadr can change your fate for the next year. We need to realize this because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith that dua and qadr wa uh, dua can change qadr. What Allah has destined for you, your dua can actually change that. If a calamity was meant for you, you can avert that with your dua. If something was written for you and you made dua for it, you guys get the point. This is the night to really exude oneself in dua and ask Allah for everything you need, big or small. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, لِيَسْأَلْ أَحَدُكُمْ رَبَّهُ حَاجَتَهُ كُلِّهَا حَتَّى يَسْأَلْ شِسْعًا عَلِهِ إِذَا قَطَعْ Let one of you ask your Lord, listen to this, let one of you ask your Lord for everything that you need, even your shoelace, if it breaks, ask Allah to replace your shoelace. Your shoelace. Because if Allah has not made it easy for you, you're not going to get it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a very beautiful hadith, that Allah is hayyun kareem. Hayyun kareem. Allah is extremely shy and he's extremely generous. That if one of us was to raise our hands, this is the hadith, one of us was to raise our hands asking Allah for something, Allah is shy to not put anything in your hand when you raise it. So, so make dua. You know when you're driving and 
a poor person comes and asks you for money and they knock on your car window, we get shy. So we pretend that we can't see. This is how it is. Allah is shy to not give you something. Just like you're shy to, you don't, you don't want to just leave me alone. Huh? Allah will give you. Allah wants to give you. So this is the night we really, really make dua. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith, he says in a hadith alayhi salatu wa salam, inna Allah la yanduru, uh, subhanallah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith that Allah doesn't answer the dua min qalbin ghafilin lah. Yes, ud'u Allah wa antum, wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Wa'alamu anna Allah la yustajib, la yustajib ad dua min qalbin ghafilin lah. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith, you must make dua to Allah. Remember this on Laylatul Qadr. Remember this on the nice, last night of Ramadan. While you're certain that Allah will answer you. Not a shred of a doubt that Allah won't answer you. 100% yaqeen and faith that Allah will answer you. Who are you asking? You're asking the King of Kings. He owns the heavens and the earth. Of course he can give you. It's not impossible. Any, nothing is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you must make dua with 100% certainty. Or the hadith says Allah will not answer you. If you have a shred of a doubt, your dua is not getting answered. So you really must have, we really must have this yaqeen, inshaAllah. And don't forget in these last 10 nights to give in sadaqah, especially to try and catch Laylatul Qadr. What a mighty, mighty reward that will be. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always give you more back. Make sure to donate generously to the mosque and support it, inshaAllah. And so on and so forth. My brothers and sisters, the final thing I will say is, uh, Allah doesn't need us, honestly. Uh, honestly, Allah doesn't need us. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Zumar, إِن تَكْفُرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنْكُمْ وَلَا يَرْضَ لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ Allah doesn't need any of us. If we commit kufr, if we show ungratitude to Allah, He doesn't care. It, it's not me, Allah, saying who is going to not benefit from this. It's you who's not going to benefit. You go to Qiyam, you go to Tahajjud, you spend the whole night in Ibadah, you read that Quran, you give that charity when you don't want to give it, you do that dhikr, you help this person out. It's for your own benefits, Allah saying. I already own the kingdomship of the heavens and the earth, Allah says. If you don't believe, if you don't do that extra prayer, if you don't do that extra Ibadah, I'm still going to have the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. So if you want it, then exude yourself and do the acts of worship that I have commanded you to do or that your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has advised you to do لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا and another verse قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ If you truly love Allah, we claim to love Allah follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let us follow and try and follow the advice of Rasulullah or the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha of what the Prophet would do in these last 10 nights let us make an effort, there are only a few nights Push yourself, exude yourself, inshallah, until you're tired to the point where Fajr hits and finally you're like, oh, I'm knackered, I can finally go to bed. But you made it, you made it. And then when Ramadan is done, then you can enjoy yourself. But try and pick up a piece of what you got in this Ramadan over the next year. That's the, only, that's the whole point of Ramadan. That's the whole point of Ramadan. The final thing, sorry, I would like to add before I end off. Just like I said that every human being is the same and it's all a mindset. Ramadan is a month like any other month. It's not a special month, okay? It's just a normal month. You notice, it's a mindset. Oh, it's the month of Ramadan, I have to change. This is a mindset. Suddenly after Ramadan, everything goes downhill. Everything you used to do stops. Why? It's, it's just another month like any other month. So we must maintain this mindset after Ramadan, of course doing as much as we can uh, so that by next Ramadan we're just a bit better and then the next year you're a bit better if you are not better than you were last Ramadan there's a problem if you're not better than the Ramadan you did five years ago there is a problem you've not benefited as an issue there that's the mindset we always have to have I always ask myself what was I doing last Ramadan uh, that I am not and that I'm, I'm now doing something that I wasn't doing last Ramadan or the Ramadan before that or Ramadan before that and if I go back I will think subhanallah you know what Last Ramadan, maybe I didn't spend all 10 nights in worship, staying up the whole night. If I do that this year, it means I've improved progress. We always have to try and track our progress, inshallah. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك سبحان ربي العظيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه May Allah سبحانه وتعالى allow us to be of those who when they hear a beneficial speech they apply it May Allah سبحانه وتعالى allow us to what make the most of the last nights of Ramadan and Laylatul Qadr and of course of course of course this wasn't the topic of the talk but dua in these last 10 nights for the people of Palestine and for the oppressed Muslims all around the world this is something that is a duty upon us this is a duty upon us in fact Rasulullah actually the Sahaba it was narrated that the Sahaba would not go one night when there was a problem with the Ummah that they wouldn't make dua against the, the, the oppressive Kuffar they would make dua against them in every single Qunut this is something we should all be doing as well it is a minimal duty upon us to do if we cannot help them the only thing we can do is dua donations and so on and so forth education use these nights so that at least on the day of judgment we can say to Allah I tried my best I made dua at least for my brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh